I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 11. Man, I like that kind of music. That gets in my bones. Deidre's over there just making that, heart, that organ sing, and oh, Lord, I just want to start singing. I need to quit. I need to preach. Matthew chapter 11, if you have grown up in church, been around church, if you read your Bible, you know this verse. I, I, I feel very certain of it. You know this verse. Um, if you don't, it's a good one to know. I didn't go back in my notes after 35, 36 years of preaching. I didn't go back and look. I should have, but I don't know if I've ever preached this text. And the Lord laid this in my spirit, and so I really believe this message is going to help some people today. These are the words of Jesus, and I've entitled this a divine invitation, and as soon as you read it, you'll see why. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, rest is at a premium today, isn't it? We run and go so hard. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Can you say amen to the powerful word of the living God? Amen. You can be seated. Uh, Recently... I received a wedding invitation. One of our office team members, Olivia, is getting married in April. Her fiance, Patrick, they go to church here, heavily involved in her ministries. And that card, that simple wedding invitation card said to me and to Leah, we want you to be with us on our special day. Well, in our text, Jesus sent not a card, but a verbal invitation to a crowd of people who were following him. And his invitation was very simple, come to me. And I, I look at the context and I look at the people that he's talking to, I, I doubt very seriously outside of the disciples, I doubt very seriously if those people really understood that the son of the living God was reaching out to them to make a personal connection with him. But what I do know is that Jesus is still inviting people to come to him today. How many of you heard that call and answered it? I'm glad I did. And and if you come to Jesus, and you can come to Jesus, I know he will meet every need. I, I, I love the songs that we sang today because it talks about him being All of these things for us that we need. And he will. The Bible says, my God shall supply all of your needs. Now, we don't come to Jesus because solely for the purpose for him to meet our needs. That would make us selfish. And I don't don't want everyone to be guilty of preaching a gospel that, hey, if you come to Jesus, Jesus will make your life better. Well, he will make your life better. But (laughs) it can also get rough. Uh, So, But that's not why you come to Jesus. The reason that you come to Jesus, that you respond to his divine invitation is because he is the only one that can meet the most important needs of your life, and those are your spiritual needs. you got to have Jesus. And so you have to come to him for help with those things. And so Jesus gives this invitation, just like I got a wedding invitation. He's giving them a verbal invitation. Come to me. Invitation. And his invitation was targeted at a specific group of people. And for some of you today, this message may not resonate it may not be as a as as applicable as it will be for others but he said come to me everybody who labors and is heavy laden i put that in these in this verbiage people in the grind and people in a bind those who are actively toiling and those who are passively enduring Anybody ever been in that kind of situation? I have. Folks who are working hard at some things and carrying some things that are wearing them down and draining the life out of them. Things that were cutting those folks up and beating them down. Jesus said, you guys, you people in that 
category, I'm giving you an invitation. Come to me. What, what would those things be that beat us down? Well, to be, a, to be a good scholar, scholars, biblical scholars, think that Jesus was referring to the heavy burden of Judaism. In other words, trying to keep God's laws as well as all the hundreds of man-made laws that the Pharisees <laughs> added to it, that was tiresome and miserable. And, and so that is probably the, the most obvious answer Jesus was saying to them. You, you, you don't have real religion. You have religiosity. You all know there's a difference, right? It's kind of like that guy I told you I preached up too long. There's a difference between being whitewashed and being washed white. And some people aren't wa washed white. They're whitewashed. And they're going through the motions. The Bible says you can have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And so, I, yeah, I think Jesus is talking to people that, that are going through the motions religiously, who are playing games. You know, you come to church every Sunday, but you don't, you don't have your heart right with God. Or you, you, you've tried, but at best you're a carnal Christian. And, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, but Paul talks about carnal Christians in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 3. So I think there are people that get in that. They think that's what gets me to God. But, you know, there could be other reasons why you could be heavy laden and, and, and worn out. And I think if you're in the rat race of life, that'll do it. Uh, Jesus' invitation would apply to you. If you're pressured to keep up with the Joneses so that you're just running yourself ragged, doing things and going places all the time, and I, some of you, this is gonna, the shoe's going to fit. Go ahead and put it on. Okay, just wear it. It's your size. Okay, you're just running yourself ragged. You work long hours to climb the corporate ladder. You're driven to, a, to attain attention. You want people to notice you and see you and see what you have. And you want recognition. And you're going to do anything and everything. You're just wearing yourself out. You take on debt, which is a kind of a burden. But your efforts are draining the life out of you. And, you know, there's some people like that. In America, that's, you know, you don't preach that kind of stuff much in Honduras. But you do in America. And, and I, I was reading the Bible before I came in here. And I, just, I don't normally do this, but just stay with me. I got some creativity in this message. But I, I was in Ecclesiastes. And the older I get, I'm appreciating Ecclesiastes more. Solomon said, then I hated all my labor. And by the way, this guy had everything, had recognition, had attention, had fame, had popularity, had money, had more than you'll ever have. Everything. And he was pretty smart, too. He said, I hated all my labor in which I had told under the sun because I must leave it to the man who will come after me. You're wearing yourself out, so when you die, somebody else gets it. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool, yet he will rule over all my labor in which I told and in which I have shown myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. So Solomon said, therefore I turned my heart and despaired of all the labor in which I had toiled under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet he must leave his heritage to a man who has not labored for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? Listen to this. For all his days are sorrowful and his work burdensome. Sounds like my text, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? Burdensome. Even in the night, his heart takes no rest. And this also is vanity. So that, Jesus is saying, if you're in the rat race, drop out of the race and come to me and I'll help you find real purpose in life. I think the third group that this would fit is if you are a sinner Jesus' invitation is definitely directed to you because sin will wear you out and it is the greatest burden you will ever carry. And, and Jesus will take that burden from you. So Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and he said, I will give you rest. And literally, in the Greek, it says, and I will rest you. Y'all know the 23rd Psalm? He makes me to lie down in green pastures. It doesn't say... He says to you, lie down. He 
makes you. And sometimes we're too stubborn. We got things we think we got to do, and we're neglecting Jesus, and we're neglecting ourselves, and we're neglecting our spouse, and we're neglecting our kids. Well, I'm preaching right now. And the Lord says, I'm going to make you lie down. You'll, you'll get sick, and you got to stay home for a week, and you're about to go nuts. But the Lord said, well, I'm trying to make you to lie down. You'll, you'll, you'll twist your ankle, and you're laid up for four days. Oh, I can't work. Well, the Lord said, I'm trying to make you to lay down. I don't know if the Lord does that, but it might be, might be true. Have you all ever experienced restless leg? If you are a high-energy person, I guarantee you, you've got restless leg. It's where your leg just goes up and down. Shake, 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 shake. There's a, there's a good friend of ours at Praise Cathedral, and she has that high energy, and, and she, she's a sweet woman. She'll cross her, and she, her leg will get to going 90 miles an hour, and then I'll hear her going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. She adds Jesus to the restless leg. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And, and so if you ever just go on, and, and I have to admit, I at times have restless leg. And I'll, I'll just, the other day I was with, I don't know, I think we were at Jaren and Mary Bass, and I was sitting there, my leg was just going, and Leah just, I was sitting by her. It was driving her crazy. She said, honey, why are you shaking your leg? I, Listen, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And so I'm getting ready last night. To, I go through my notes, and, and I was in the office, and I was sitting there going to the notes, and I, I looked down, I went, Dead gum, I'm shaking my leg. I'm doing what I'm about to preach. Didn't even realize I was doing it. Now, now the reason I, I, I just bring that up is some people don't have restless leg. They have restless lives. It's going all the time, just shaking all the time. And they're, and they're just wearing themselves down. And, it, and, and they don't realize, you don't realize you're doing it and you're getting on everybody's nerves. But when you come to Jesus, he said, I'll give you rest. The restless leg stops. Or maybe I should say the restless life stops. And the grind stops. And you experience rest, which is repose and refreshment in your life. It isn't just like taking a 10-minute power nap. It's a life change where you say, okay, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just but it's more than some self-help technique. It's where God says to you, you're looking at the wrong things. You're doing the wrong things. You're focused. You, it's okay to go after those things, but you're, you're going at them and paying the wrong price. Come to me. Seek first, come on, say it with it, the kingdom of God and, all, and his righteousness, right? And then all, all these you don't have to work for them. They'll be added to you. And there is this lesson that we learn in our discipleship to just walk with the Lord and not get so bent out of shape about all the stuff in life and realize if I just put the more important things first, God, family, and then everything else. It's amazing how it all just falls into place. My chiropractor's in the years have told me that, you know, my chiropractor, she'll, she'll work top, top of the neck down to the bottom. But, but years ago, I learned a secret that all chiropractors know, that the top vertebrae in your neck is the key. And if it's out of whack, if it's tilted, then everything else in your back goes out. If they can get that one, they get that one straight, then there is a concept in chiropractic that if they get that one straight, then the back straightens the rest of them straighten out. You got to get the right things straight in your life. God, family, the church. And then when you get those things right, and you keep focused on the amazing, all those other things you want to do, go working and all the other things, education and dating and all the, it just falls into place. Jesus promises in verse 29, you will find rest for your souls. Your soul is the seat of your emotions, the seat of your thoughts, the seat even, it can even represent your spirit, so you will have emotional rest, mental rest. 
You ever so tormented? You, you, don't raise your hand, but your mind won't stop working. That's a, that's a problem. When your mind won't shut down, that, that you need help. You need divine help. Because God doesn't want you to be so overwhelmed that you can't even sleep at night. You'll, no more grinding, no more binding. Peace and serenity will flood your soul. And then he, and then he gives another invitation. And, and I just, honestly, I didn't really realize this till last night. I'd, I'd written this message, and I was just going over my notes, and I said, you know, there's two invitations. Come to me, and then there's another one. So I, had to, I actually added this to my notes. And then he said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, that's another invitation. Take my yoke upon you. And so here's a picture. I think everybody knows what a yoke is, but that's a yoke, okay? And, and it's, a, it's a wooden cross beam that goes across the back of two animals, and then they, they put the little piece underneath, and it secures them. And then together, they're able to pull a plow or pull a cart, and they work together as a team. So, so you're, when you're yoked to something, you're joined to something. Okay, and, and, you, and, and with a double yoke, you got to have two. I think they're single yokes, but when you have a double yoke, and that's what Jesus was talking about, you have to have two. And, and usually, <clears throat> usually one animal is a little bit bigger and stronger, more dominant than the other. Y'all smart people, you're putting the dots together, aren't you? As the British would say, you're joining the dots. Watch British shows and you start realizing things. We say connect the dots. They join the dots. Here's something you may not know. The phrase, take my yoke on you, was actually used by the rabbis in the first century. It means to go to school to learn something. So a rabbi would invite a man to follow him and be part of his school of teaching. And so he would say, come take my yoke upon you. And that was an invitation to join up with that rabbi and follow him and follow his teachings. And listen, that's, ex that's exactly what Jesus did with his disciples. Okay? So Jesus was calling the people to cast aside the yoke or the burden of Judaism. Keep, just keep that yoke picture on the screen if you don't mind, please. And they're connected, and he said, he said, throw that thing off. Because keeping the law of Moses or the man-made laws of the Pharisees could not save them. It was a burden, but he said, I can save you. And, and you're not going to have to keep all these rules and rituals and man-made things because I'm going to fulfill all that. You, you understand, when Jesus died and rose from the dead, all the Old Testament, some people get so wrapped up in the Old Testament Rituals and stuff. Listen, he fulfilled all that. We don't need those anymore. Those are, those are, those are ir irrelevant. No more sacrifices. No more feasts. No more Passover. None of that stuff. Some people like to do a cedar. It's cool because it teaches you about what they did. Most good cedars done in a church, though, always point back to Christ. They, they teach you about, here's the fulfillment. And so what Jesus was saying is, you don't have to do all those things anymore because I'm going to fulfill them. And so I, I think today he's calling you to throw off whatever you are connected with now that is, that is taking you in a direction you don't want to go, causing you to be somebody that you don't want to be, whether that's the legalism of a religion or religiosity or whether it's the rat race or whether it's just you're burdened right now with the most incredible situation multifaceted, when it rains, it has poured. There, there's, a, there's a wonderful lady sitting in this church right now as I worked my way through this congregation earlier because I love to get out and just talk to y'all before church. And she just started telling me one thing after the other that was happening to her. And she said, I don't know how much more I can take. She said, I almost didn't come to church today. I said, it's a good thing you did because I got a message just for you. And that's, that's what Jesus is saying. When you feel like I can't take anymore, the burden's too heavy, I don't know how much more I can stand, that's when you crawl in an altar and you say, God, take this thing off of me. And you take it and join me up to you, Lord. And when that happens, your whole circumstance changes.
Mark 8, 34 through 37. It, and, I, and I said legalism, the, you know, the burden, the rat race, this world, sin. I don't want to leave that out. This is sin. If that's the thing, Jesus, you're, Jesus said you're yoked up to sin. You can throw it off. I can save you. I can get you out of that yoke. You can yoke up with me. You can disconnect from sin and connect with me permanently for all of, for all of eternity. Listen to Mark 8, 34 through 37. When Jesus had called people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Because I hear Jesus saying, look, for what will it profit you if you gain the whole world but you lose your soul? Or what will it profit you if you, what can you give in exchange for your soul? And I hope you don't sit there today and say, Pastor Chris, I appreciate this presentation, your presentation. But I'm not yoked up to anything. I got news for you. Everybody's yoked up to something. Yes, sir. Everybody's yoked up to somebody or something. Just give me, give me, give me 48 hours and I'll tell you what it is. Let me just follow you around for 48 hours, and I'll tell you what it is. Everybody's yoked up to something. But when you yoke with Jesus, he will teach you how to serve God faithfully and not fanatically. When you yoke up with Jesus, he will teach you how to set your priorities in a way that you put God in your family first. When you yoke up with Jesus, he will instruct you how to obey and serve God with a clean heart full of passion and fire for him. He said, I am gentle and lowly in heart. That means I'm meek and I'm humble. You know what I found? Religiosity, the world, the rat race, sin are tyrants. They are absolute tyrants. They don't care about you and they will beat the life out of you and take everything from you. They are relentless in their demands on you. They don't care about your physical, emotional, spiritual mental well-being. They don't. But Jesus is not like them. Now, Jesus is the king of kings, okay, but he is no tyrant. And he is not an overbearing control freak who's going to micromanage your life. That's what some people think. If I come to the Lord, is that what happens? No. He's gentle. He's kind. He's aware of your struggles. He's aware of your challenges. He's aware of your failures. He's aware of your mistakes. He'll help you with those. But he's not going to just pounce on you. He wants you to choose out of love to serve him and trust him. He'll not make you. You choose. Now, don't get me wrong. He still demands things from you. He'll demand righteousness, obedience, but he'll also extend grace to you, and he won't wear you out or weigh you down. And he said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And that word easy means pleasant. Listen, everybody in here has an authentic walk with the Lord to tell you there is a joy in walking with Jesus. We may not be happy all the time. There are sometimes I'm not happy, okay? I watched the Clemson basketball game, and they lost to a team they should not have lost to. I was not happy. Okay? But that didn't kill my joy. That didn't kill my joy. There is a joy in walking with Jesus. There's a joy in ministry. There's a joy in doing the right thing. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. My yoke is pleasant and my burden is light. See, the, 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 my, the yoke is pleasant. We like that, but, but my burden, wait a minute, what do, you mean? what do you mean there's a burden? Yeah, there's a burden. This is what the Lord demands of you. But what he demands of you is light. And it's not light, I, I think, like we think. I, I, I looked at this, and it's amazing how the Greek language opens your eyes to really understand what Jesus was saying, what the gospel writers were trying to convey. It literally means light as air. My burden is light as air. Here's the thought process in, in the etymology, is that, is that it's so light that the wind 
could blow it and push it along. He said, those, those, my demands on you are such that the wind can push it along. Well, I can join the dots. I'm a good Pentecostal. And I know all about a wind in the Bible, a breath, a spirit, ruah in the, Greek, in the Hebrew, pneuma in the Greek. He is called the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. He's the wind. And when you get saved or when you yield to God, the Spirit of God, the wind inside of you, enables you, empowers you to obey to make right decisions, to set right priorities, to overcome sin and live for Jesus every day of your life, to be free from the form of religion and to know the life. The letter of the law kills, but man, the spirit gives life. That's why, the, that's why if you came here today and you, well, how, how come we're always so happy and we're shouting and joyful? It's because we've got the spirit of God inside of us. And he has, we're yoked up with him, and he has made life light. Do, do we have burdens? Yeah. Do we go through things? Yeah. But the Holy Spirit helps us, blows through us to go through it and get to where we need to go. That's why the Bible says you knock us down seven times, we get right back up again. That's what the Bible says. The righteous may fall seven times, but they get back up every time again. We're like that little dummy thing, you know, that blow-up doll where you knock it down, and it boing, bounces right back up. That's up. Musicians come. So, I brought some luggage. I came up here and brought it while the praise team was practicing, and I said, Leah's kicked me out. <laughs> she hasn't. She's over there. So. But sweet Priscilla said, that's okay, Pastor. You can come home with us. <laughs> I said, no, it didn't happen. Now, some of you, uh, by the way, I was going to wait till next Sunday, but I'll go ahead and tell them because y'all see me hobbling around. I'm supposed to have a uh, partial knee replacement a week from tomorrow. And I'm excited because I've just been in misery and so they're going to go in. They think they can do a partial, not a total. Please pray that it's just a partial. And, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to be back at it, but uh, just pray for me. So anyway, never mind that. Let's get back to luggage. Some of you who are younger are not going to understand this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you to see a little history. There was a time when this was luggage. You had to carry it. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Suitcase. You had to carry it. If it was heavy, because I loaded this one up just to help make the point and fill it out. It's heavy. You went to the airport, parked in the parking lot. You got your luggage. One on this hand, one in this hand. You had a suit bag on strapped around. And then poor ladies, they had their purse. Like this, carrying it through the parking lot, get on the bus, take you to, then in the airport, you're carrying it. Everywhere you go, you're carrying it. Finally get it up to the luggage claim. You were so glad. But then when you arrived and you had to go to the baggage claim, and that little machine's running, and here it goes, and you grab it. You jerked it off and laid it down here, and grabbed the next one, and grabbed the, there will, there will, you just had to pick it up and do the same thing in that city where you flew to. It was heavy. It was burdensome. It'd wear you out. It's exactly what Jesus was talking about. Great illustration. Things we carry. And the longer you carry it, the heavier it gets. Some of y'all been carrying some stuff for a long time. Some of y'all been in some stuff and it's worn you down. I came here today, today Jesus wants to set you free. But then, some brilliant genius came along and put wheels 
on the luggage. Oh, hallelujah. Watch this. Somebody got a bright idea and said, let's yoke wheels to the luggage. We'll yoke some wheels to the luggage. Same, same contents in this bag. Same weight in this bag. Oh, and then they came up with something else. They put a handle. A retractable hand. Hallelujah. Same weight. Same content. Got to work it. You got it. You got some way to go. But this time you just lean it back. And you just pull like this. And it's amazing how much easier it is. You can get one of those supercalifragilistics mega giant whopper suitcases. How many of y'all got one of those? About the size of your king size bed. You can pull that anywhere you want to go. Same weight, same load, but all of a sudden, because you've yoked up with the wheels, suddenly the yoke is easy. That's a whole lot easier than that. Same burden, but it doesn't feel like it. The burden is, go ahead and say it, like, I'm just telling you, the situation may not change right now. Still got all the same stuff going on. Well, your sin will have to go. You may have to reprioritize your life. If you're going to get, if you're going to get real religion, you got to get rid of going through the motions and stop playing games and start getting real with God. But when you do those things and get, connect with Jesus, it's amazing how much lighter life is. And I'm just telling you today, He gives you rest from your labor. It doesn't mean that there aren't demands from Him. It doesn't mean that you won't have to endure some things. You're going to endure persecution. You're going to endure tribulation. Everybody goes through hard times. Bad things happen to good people. Partial knee replacement. How about that? But here's what I found. What it does mean is that Jesus and his spirit will make it easier to live this life because you're connected with him and you're walking in the spirit. Stand with me this morning.